you still can. Leave now before Master finds you. Who is that knocking at my door? Who is that knocking at my door? Who is that knocking at my door? Be gone with you. <laughs> Hi everyone, once again join my father for another uh, horror review for the month of October. Say hi, Dad. Hello. Actually, again, just like the Scarface video, we're doing once again another uh, double review talking about the old versus the original of, uh, this is about House of Wax. Well, the original was called Mystery of the Wax Museum from 1933. The 1953 film with Vincent Price was called House of Wax. What do you think of both versions of uh, this movie? I think they're both really good. I they're agree. Both, they're both very effective. They are, they are. The performances are great, and also, like, well, the first one at that time was shot, like, in uh, Technicolor at that time, which was very, you know, groundbreaking and very unusual for film at that time in history. Yeah, it was. And also, that was, I never realized there was a difference between, like, uh, two Technicolor and three Technicolor, but once three Technicolor came around, they basically ditched the two Technicolor because of how, like, better quality it was. Right. And, uh, mm -hmm. This was basically, I, I don't know if this was the, yeah, this is the first and basically the last time they used Technicolor. Oh, was it? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah according to what I read from research and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I feel the same way. It's like I'm back and forth with, like, both versions of this film. It's like, I do like both. It's like, but part of me feels like maybe, like, yes, Mr. The Wax Museum is, uh, Mr. The Wax Museum is great, but for some reason there's something about the uh, Vincent Price version I always, like, prefer to go back to a lot for some reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the first one, uh, I mean, has its limitations because right. it, it is a, an older film. True. Although it interests me because it was directed by Michael Curtiz. Right, who did who, Casablanca, Robin Hood, White Christmas. Right. Yeah. Michael Curtiz also directed movies like Angels with Dirty Faces, Yankee Doodle Danny, which I reviewed last year on my YouTube channel. Link in the description. And he directed Mildred Pierce with Joan Crawford. So, uh, and it also uh, gives a, uh, the uh, lead characters played by Lionel Atwell. Yeah, who does who, a great job. Right, and he would go on to play in other universal horror movies. Son, Son of Frankenstein and... Oh, I... <laughs> and he, he, uh, he, he gives a, a really good performance. And the supporting characters are also interesting. They are, they are. I like that one character. Um, I don't remember her name, but if I'm forgetting names, but... It's uh, Glenda Farrell. Gl Gl Glenda Farrell. She kind of reminded me of, like, a Lois Lane-like type of character where she's, like, trying to, like, expose the truth. And that was before Superman comic books were right. around that time. Right. She yeah. plays, like, a wise crack. Yeah, well, yeah, a little... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's also, like, funny. T it, it does have, like, its humor... Co like, she's basically, like, a little bit of comedy relief because That's of, right. like, how mm -hmm. the film is horrifying, how you had this guy who had, like, a wax museum that he really, like, loved doing a lot, but then his partner, like, wanted to burn the place down so they can collect uh, insurance money that way mm -hmm. because he didn't think that there was, like, really no money for, like, what they were making, but... Lionel Atwell's character, real, he really, even if he wasn't making, he still loved what he did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he felt bad for him, like, when his friend uh, ruined everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, of course, uh, Faye Ray. Yes, uh, yes, Faye yes. Early performance by Faye yeah, Ray. I'm not sure if this came out before, like, I'm not, I can't remember exactly, like, the orders exactly between this and King Kong first. Yeah. yeah. I, th I think this was first, but I could be wrong. Yeah, if I to, like, <laughs> maybe I'll just, like, uh, record that as I edit this, and, mm -hmm. uh... Correction, this movie came out first before King Kong by two months. Yeah, and I, I, it's, I also like how like the film like opens up in like 1921, and then it cuts to like New Year's a decade later after the uh, the accident that he right. has. Right. And also a little <laughs> spoiler right here, the part like when it's revealed like he was the one behind the murder, it's like again, another like fan of the opera moment in some ways right. when she mm -hmm. well I mean the only difference is she like hits his face and right. is the whole time he was a wax uh, figure. Right, right. Yeah. The wax falls off. Yeah, and which I thought was very clever. Yeah, I thought that was very clever. It was, yeah. it was, it was. And But in some, but because I saw the house, of, what, you know, like, the funny part is when I was watching both versions back to back, you can like can make the connection, like noticing like the similarity, but of course some differences. Like mm -hmm. like the Glenda Farrell character, uh, Farrell character is not in the uh, House of Wax uh, version. Right. It's, yeah, it's, it's basically uh, Phil, uh, Phyllis Kirk is, like, more of the main focus in that version. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, of course, in that ver version, uh, 
Vincent Price is, is great. Oh, he as, is. He's excellent. Yeah, is. no, it's... Yeah. I think it was at that time he was, like, starting to, like, rise up and make his name for, like, the horror genre at mm-hmm. that time. That's why I love the the House of Wax. It's just, again, it's Vincent Price. You know, you can't go wrong. It's like, does this guy ever make a bad film ever in his life, in his career? Mm-hmm. Always, even while, even in some, like... Uh, cheesy horror films that he did like later that were not critically acclaimed he still made the best and was entertained to watch and all those mm-hmm. yeah and also an interesting thing about uh, the second film it was directed by Andre de Toth yeah now Andre de Toth only had one eye right yet this was a film that was filmed in 3D yeah I, I, I remember uh, watching that scene when the guy is like hitting the Paddle ball, the, the, yeah. the paddle ball, and I'm thinking, imagine what this was like to see back in 1953 when this uh, movie came out. They were breaking the fourth wall, and uh, people yeah. just thinking, like, for real, like, because at that time, 3D was like, I don't, I wouldn't say this was not the first. Right around that time, 3D was just coming around. That time yeah, well, in period. the 50s, 3D uh, became popular. Um, I forget the name of the first 3D movie, which was also was a uh, creature feature. Yeah, um, and. Um, you know they they used gimmicky things like uh, in this particular movie they had the uh, the character that was in front of the movie theater advertising the movie or right not the movie theater actually it was the the uh, museum right and he was hitting the paddle ball right and he would do it going towards the uh, camera so it would look like. The ball was coming yeah. into your face when you were wearing the glasses <laughs> yeah, well, in the theater. Because like, we own this on DVD, they, it didn't come with like 3D glass. I'm not sure if this is on like, I mean, it probably is on Blu-ray. I'm not sure it would come with. Yeah, like, I, don't, I don't know if it is, but anyway, you need a special TV. That, that's that's. I, I don't need right. to watch this. I'm not really much of a 3D. I mean, yeah. But I still imagine what was it like to see this in 3D at right. the time to see how cool that was when he hits the paddle board and stuff and. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And also one thing like I do like about the House of Wax with Vincent Price is it's it's, it's a lot more like colorful shot compared to the original. It's like the, oh, right. yeah. like I like I, now I can see why they went to three D Technicolor because it was just so much better like quality compared to uh, the two Technicolor. And I also like the uh, the German expression like atmosphere this has. The feeling like when he kills his partner in that film, I just love the like, way when he runs away again. I just love German expression atmosphere films. Yeah. 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 And also the makeup on him is pretty cool too. And again, it's another, right. another like fan of the opera moment. When it's revealed that he was the uh, the murderer the whole time. Mm-hmm. Carolyn Jones was in this film way before. Um, also, well, a few years before Invasion of the Body Snatchers, and the decade before she did Adam's Family. Right. Yeah. Right. Which I thought was interesting. Like not only did uh, Vincent Price's uh, character go after the, his partner who uh, ruined his museum. He went after, uh, like, she was like a girlfriend that he was dating. I mm-hmm. guess he figured that whoever was involved with him, that's what, like, motivate him to, like, kill other people who knew him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then also there's a, a very young Charles Bronson. Yes, I was going to point that. <laughs> when I first saw this, I don't remember when I first saw it. I just remember, like, seeing it, like, in my early 20s when I was, like, watching other, like, horror films when I was in the horror and sci-fi club in my college. Mm-hmm. I'm like, wait a second, why does that guy look familiar to me? When I looked at him, I'm like, I knew him. Like, is that Charles Bronson? Like, mm-hmm. this had been a very young and unknown Charles Bronson at the time right. when this movie came out. Right. Yeah. And he's billed as Charles Bukowski. Right, which I guess right. Was his real name. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I read that, uh, and what's interesting, I'm like, like, when you look past it, like, you know, other horror movies that time with, like, side, you know, henchmen or, like, hunchback characters. His character is more of like uh, built up, and he's a mute and not very like smart and bright. When right, he, mm-hmm. yeah, not like he doesn't have like a hunchback in his. No, uh, no. And it's like all right, I guess they thought let's change it up, let's because they thought we've already seen the hunchback type of right. Igor system so many times. Let's do a different type of uh, right, yeah. Which Assi- are, assistant, assistant, yeah, yeah. Which right. I thought was a pretty good clever yeah. like change right. up in a good way. Yeah, like I said, to me, it's just like hard to pick and decide which one. Maybe if I had to pick. Probably the House of Wax Vincent Price version because of how like it was such a great example how like they uh, did a great like remake change up for its time and yeah but still I do have a lot of respect for uh, Mystery of the Wax Museum for how it was very groundbreaking for its film at that time yeah yeah that's a good way to put it yeah like I remember when we watched it during COVID at the time it's like I knew about the film I just never got around to seeing but at that time like during COVID when there's nothing to do like let's watch it together and we watched it I'm like. This is actually very a very good film, and mm-hmm. I highly recommend it to anybody who loves 
horror film for the 30s or who's like into like film in general mm-hmm. and yeah and also it also the people have pointed out the uh Minister of the Wax Museum as like a semi people did you ever see Dr. X or yes people have said that's sort of like a semi even though I, I never saw but people point that as a semi sequel to it yeah, I, I haven't seen Dr. X in a while, yeah. so I really can't comment. Yeah, no, me neither, but I've I never seen it, but I'd like to maybe, like, watch it and check that out to see, like, why people compare, uh, and, like, think that's a semi-sequel follow-up to, uh, ha- mm-hmm. uh, also because Michael Curtis directed that could be a reason. Right. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah. 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 Also, the other thing, too, like, the part, like, when, in the House of Wax, when it's revealed, when he, uh, I know this is what I actually want to mention before. I also love Ali with Vincent Price's performance. How like he does such a great job of like uh, hiding his, uh, you know, who he really is behind the mask, mm-hmm. and how like, you know, like he's a humble guy and a gentleman. You would never assume that he was the, right. Uh, right. Again, again, another great Vincent Price moment. Like when she's looking at like the statue, she's thinking like, why did this? You know, she's getting like this sense like it looks familiar, like her best friend who was killed and. Mm-hmm. Uh, he comes in saying, like, oh, calm down. I know, sometimes these wax feels so real, but right. there's no need to be afraid. It's all, like, well, yeah, he's, just, he's doing such a great job. Yeah, of, like, yeah he does. He yeah, does. it's like, but he's such a scum bucket, like, behind yeah, clothes. I, I know. I <laughs> right, know. that's what makes it, like, so, like, why I love the uh, Vincent Price version so yep. much. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, <laughs> like I said, Vincent Price, you can't go wrong. No. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to touch upon with both the original, the remake, or? No, I don't think so. That's a little Actually, here, here's one I do want to, did you ever see? You probably heard there was a 2005 remake. Oh, I did. Yeah, I did. You, you, you didn't miss anything. I saw that when I was a teenager, but that time I had no idea. Like, I didn't see the connection at that uh-huh. time until like I was in my college years when I found out about how like you know there was yeah that that was just a piece of garbage remake. It was like just not necessary. Just completely like it basically becomes like your generic like slasher. Where we have a bunch of these stupid dumb teenagers who are doing like what the. Uh, the cliche slasher genre is all about. Mm-hmm. But the only difference is he's not like an axe murderer. He basically kills his victim by turning him into wax. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was also, I wouldn't, I would say, not that I'm saying it was like, it was a semi also remake to Taurus Trap. Mm-hmm. Did you ever see that? No, I never oh, saw that. Oh, no, that's really good. Again, I wouldn't be surprised if the guy who directed Taurus Trap, he took like inspiration from House of Wax where. A same concept, but he did like a, ch- a good change up to it. But it's not a remake; it's just like the same concept, but just different. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's like it was like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but done as like with a twist of House of Wax to it. Okay. We'll watch it sometime. That is a really good movie. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, skip the, my advice. Skip. Well, despite it does seem to have a cult fun. I don't understand why that is. Because when I rewatched it for this, I'm like, this movie is still not that good. And also, what makes it worse? Paris Hilton. <laughs> yeah, seeing Paris Hilton act, it's like, you gotta be kidding me. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's, yes. My advice, s- s- stick to these two. These are the best. The 2000, well, if you like the 2005 remake, then keep loving it. Don't let me stop you for that. Who am I to judge? Mm-hmm. Alright, I guess that covers everything we've done. So, okay. like the video, subscribe, and uh, see you next time. Say bye, Dad. Bye-bye.